aggression is advised. Hey everyone, welcome to Board Games Unlocked, and today I'm doing a no run through review of Heroes of Land, Air and Sea, <coughs> and the expansion Order of Chaos. So let's get Order of Chaos out of the way. It literally just, it's a five to six player expansion that adds four new factions, which are the Lionkin, Lizard Folk, Undead, and Goblins. I have played with the Lionkin the, and the Lizard Folk, and then, so basically, I'm going to be talking about Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea, um, which is the 4X game by Scott Alms. And if you don't know, Scott Alms is the uh, designer behind all the Tiny Epic games. So Tiny Epic West, <laughs> Zombies, Galaxies, Defenders, uh, all, all those other ones that are hit and miss, and uh, some are really good, and some are uh, really bad. In my experience, I've only played the Tiny Epic Quest, which was basically Legend of Zelda, but just didn't have, it, it was just missing something. It was just kind of like, eh, oh, yep, it was it was a game. Um, and unfortunately, that's kind of where I'm at with Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. While playing this game, I was constantly thinking to myself, what am I missing here? Like, like, what, what is wrong? Like, am I missing a rule? Do I just not get it? Uh, just a lot of those thoughts went through my mind uh, while playing this game. And uh, even after thinking about it, I still don't know what is wrong with this game. So, uh, to elaborate a little further on this, I'm going to explain basically how the game essentially works. You have your own faction that is unique to unique... I mean, everyone that performs the same actions, everyone does the same, like, plays the same way, has the same capital, none of that stuff changes. But basically, your buildings are different, and over the course of the game, you can permanently create these buildings. They don't go on the board or anything, you just have them. They give you uh, abilities, and based off the level of your capital uh, is the level of abilities. You get, like, five total. Two of them are the same for almost everyone, because you need uh, ways to build a ship and ways to build an aircraft. And... I mean, those two are the same, but the the abilities are different. So you have three levels for each of these, and then uh, and then that's kind of what makes your faction unique. Plus, you have three unique heroes that are off to the side. That based off the buildings that you build, you can bring these heroes on. They have abilities that also tie into your capital. So yeah, it's a it's a four X game. Expand, uh, exploit, ex. Uh, terminate and, uh, did I say explore? Yeah, explore. So you have those four things that you're doing in this game, and basically how you win is one of four ways, through one of these ways. Either you com you destroy a enemy's capital, they lose, they, there's no, even if they had 50 points uh, by the end, of, by that time, if they lose, they, they're, they're out of the game. You have exploit, which is, un uh, like, revealing all of, uh, no, no, no. Uh, exploit was, oh, uh, three towers. Three towers on, on the, the board. Expand was having all your people out, uh, your warriors and your serfs, and Explore was revealing these uh, tokens on every spot <clears throat> on the map. Uh, once that happens, then you do basically one final round, and whoever has the most victory points after endgame touring wins the game. Um, that's, that's generally the gist. So, let's talk about things that I don't like about Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. And I'll probably be jumping back and forth between, uh, like, things that I like. Because, like, there's things that I that I like and things that I don't like, and they kind of go in together uh, depending on the mechanism. So the first thing, let's talk about kind of where I am at uh, with this. So I personally feel that there is just a lot of stuff that is put into this game, and it doesn't really know what it wants to do. It knows it wants to be a 4X game, but it doesn't really know how it wants to hone all of these mechanisms in. And what do I mean by that? Well, not only do you have, there's just uh, every capital, like, so you have to have your different levels of capitals, which is going to be, should be everyone's focal point. Get to level 3, because, e like, and as fast as possible, because if you don't, you are going to be behind. So you have to worry about your levels. Then you have to worry about, uh, you know, getting your towers out on the board because then your people can basically, they're adjacent. Like, they can transfer between towers, uh, which is also kind of weird. 
uh, you have to worry about all the special abilities of these five different buildings. And then this is all from the get-go. So you have to read all this, and then you have all these different levels of your heroes uh, that you're also trying to figure out how to get on the board. And then you have, like, the 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 actual actions of the game um, that you have these five different actions, or these four actions that, okay, if you do these, then people can copy those, but then if you do these, then you can do double actions. So you have to worry about, okay, managing that. Uh, then you have the resources, where there's three different types of resources that are all for building and recruiting and all that that go up and down. and then So <clears throat> there's just a lot of different mechanisms in this game that for me anyway, sounded good. Like, it sounded good on paper. It sounded good when I was when I read the rules and watched the video. Uh, and I was like, great, okay. But when playing, I felt like there, were, there wasn't really anything exciting going on. Like, a, a lot of it was like, okay, do you do your turn? You do your turn. Okay, great, now it's my turn. Now I'm going to do this. And never once was I excited to do anything. I wasn't excited to... to you know, recruit people. I wasn't excited, even whenever I could recruit heroes, I wasn't excited to have them on the board. I wasn't excited to go march and battle someone. I wasn't excited to build. It was just, I I don't know what is, <laughs> what is wrong about this game. So you're sitting here waiting for your turn to happen, and the game says 30 minutes per player. Fine, that's probably closer to truth than, than, uh, than false. So, um, like, the game is relatively quick for a 4x game but it just doesn't have that oomph um now things that so what i don't like about this game is the so i mentioned that and then there was uh, like the the game has spells in 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 the game and like everyone there's just one deck and then everyone draws and then you have a spell limit that you also have to worry about well you can cast this if you do a cast action or you can scribe it, which means you put it off to your side and you can cast it multiple times. You just have to pay. Everything has a resource cost, so you're constantly fighting with your resources, uh, trying to figure out. And these these spells cost a resource. They cost mana. And half the time, I never wanted to cast them. Like, I was like, okay, great. They're just That's just one more thing to take care of. And one more thing to just, okay, well, so I have this. And it's just not as intuitive as I would have liked. The actions... Uh, I thought were okay, like, and, and well, well, the actions were your standard ones, move, recruit, stuff like that, but build, but what I mean by that is you have serfs, you have these two different types of units, you have serfs and you have warriors. Your serfs are used to build your buildings and then they're also used to help gather resources and they're also for uh, doubling up actions or copying actions. So nothing's really unique about that, like the, the copying actions. Other games have done it before. Um, and uh, there was some strategy to that. Like you could look at your players' boards and be like, okay, they don't have any serfs. So like they're called capital actions and it's like, I don't want to do those. I mean, I want to do them, but I don't want to do them at the same time because other people have serfs. And I, I understand that that's part of the strategy, but then it's like, I feel like I, it's taken away from what I want to do. Um, and personally, I didn't like that. So, like, you could do these capital actions and then people could be like, oh, I have a serf ready, and then so they'll, they'll follow up. They'll be like, okay, you're going to build? Great. Now I will also build. And then, so it's like a lot of stuff that you're doing, people get to benefit from. And I'll explain another example of that later. But, so you have those capital actions, but then it's like you have to have these serfs in your capital, not on the map, to maybe double up on actions. And... So it's a very slow build because you, you need food to recruit these people. So it's like, okay, either you go all in on people, you know, which you probably should do. Everyone's move should be get as many serfs out as possible because you're going to constantly have an influx of resources and you're going to be able to copy people with their actions or double up your actions. Like, if you are not getting serfs out on the board, you are probably not going to do that well. And then, then you slowly get your warriors out because it's like, okay, well, it's, eventually that's what everyone's going to do. So then people have to fight and and that's what's going to lead me into combat which i think is one of the strongest things about this game but also i have a pretty big negative that goes along with that so obviously exterminate is a part of the combat is part of a 4x game like uh so half the time i never wanted to fight anyone 
I was like, there is no benefit for me to do this. Um, and it kind of had that same, it was a big complaint I had with like the Lords of Hellas, uh, where it's like, I'm not fighting you to benefit me. Like I'm literally just bogging this game down just to make it last longer. Um, because it's like, okay, me stopping you. Like one of the moves uh, recently was, I was looking and Kat was, her next turn she was able to trigger the end game. And I was like, okay, well I can stop her from doing that. But I had to, I was really like, I don't really want to because that's just going to make the game last longer. And I was winning. Like, I, I had the most victory points at that time. And I was like, okay, great. I'll probably pull a win out if we end the game now. But it's like, I, so, so it's like, but I mean, who knows? Like, it's like, but she'll, she'll end the game and then she'll have these towers out. So it's like, maybe I should stop her. And... If you've watched any of my run-throughs or any of these no run-through reviews, you know that I'm a very competitive person. So if there's an opportunity for me to stop someone from winning, then I will do it. But it's like, God, I really would rather this game end. And there were a lot of times where it's like, yep, this could have ended a long time ago, and I wish it had, but I mean, I wanted to play, and but at the same time, I didn't want to play. I was just like, what is, what is, what is missing out of this game? So I mean, eventually, I was like, okay, I'll do it. I'll, I'll stop you. Uh, so I went in with combat, and uh, the combat in this game is, is actually very well done. You have these uh, cards. Everyone has the same seven cards, and it gives you almost perfect information. There's no luck involved. Um, so you can look, a lot of these cards have a resource cost to play it, like mana or ore or food, and then they all have these different abilities, but there's also restrictions. It's like, okay, well, if your army, if I'm attacking you and you only have serfs, you can't do some specific cards. So it's like you're sitting there and you can look at them and be like, okay, they only have serfs. So these three cards they cannot use. So they have these four left. Okay. Uh, they have no resources, so these two are out. Great, they have these two left. Okay, I think I'm in the clear. So you have, you can, there's, there's the process of elimination, which I very much like, and it's like, okay, well, they're attacking a tower, so they know I'm probably going to do a defense card, so they can do that. Uh, so they're probably going to do this to counteract that. And, and there's just a lot of getting, like, reading your opponent and, and the situation, which I very much like. The combat is, is probably my favorite thing about this game. But at the same time, it has a pretty big negative, and here's what it is. Both players play a card. They flip it, they pay the resources, or you can use units to help pay the cost, but then they, they actually go off the board and go into your supply. But the card has a point value on it. So both players get the points that are listed on the card, whether it's three points or two points or whatever. And that's the part that I hate about it, because if you win... You don't get anything. You don't. I mean, you, they they're not there and they anymore. But you don't get any more victory points. You don't get any resources. You don't get to stop them. Really, you don't get to take anything. You can't. You can just potentially destroy their towers, which are not hard to get out, and you should remove their units, which are also really not that hard to get out. Because by the time everyone's fighting, they're probably have an established source of uh, like resources. So it's like, okay, I killed some of your units. I just stopped you for the time being until oh, it's your turn now, and you okay, you recruited, so they just came back. All right, uh, but I do not like the fact that both players get victory points. It's like no, like that's not. I I guess thematically you did fight, but it's like you lost. Why are you rewarded with victory points for losing? I think it should be if you get points, you win. If you win, you get those points, so there's some risk-rewards. Like, okay, I'm going to try this because it's worth points. Oh, I lost, dang it, I don't get it. I'm not saying you have to lose those points for losing, but it's like, you lose the battle, I gain the victory points. Like, there's some incentive there for me to want to go out and fight you because there's points to be... And even the attacker gets one point for just attacking, which for some reason. But it's like, okay, great. Like, and that's not enough to... Okay, I'm going to go across this continent. I'm going to go across the sea to go fight you. It's like, why? Why? Whenever I can just do my own thing, be doing all this other stuff, and because you don't, like, if there was a big influx of points, it would be worth it, but it's like, even then, like, the defender can still get more points than you based off the card that they play. So, they can play a card that's worth, like, three victory points, and you can play a card that's worth zero or, or two, and it's like, why 
why'd they still get three if they lost? I, d I don't understand that. So, like, best thing about it, but it, it still even holds it back based off of that victory point thing. Because it's a pretty tight game, because every spell you cast costs mana and has points. Every, uh, uh, vi you know, combat that you fight gives you points. Um, not a whole lot of stuff, actually, just gives you points throughout the game. Um, a lot of it is endgame scoring, so it's just kind of like planning for that. And, I mean, that's pretty much the, 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 the negative. So the things that I do like about this game is I love the aesthetics of it. Like, so you're sitting there, and all the ships are these little 3D models that you, like, kind of, they're cardboard that you fold up and, and fit together, and they're on stands. So the ships, or the, the aircraft actually are on stands, so they stand above everyone. I think that's awesome. The towers and the capital has three levels, so it kind of it's a big piece and a medium piece and a small piece. It goes up, so the game looks beautiful, very bright, very vibrant. All the spells have like this little drawing, like artwork on it. Uh, your your you know meeple meeples your uh, miniatures are different. I mean they're not like they're different from everyone else's, but like. The, the serfs all are the same model, but the warriors are different, and then your heroes are all different, and I have the ones that are painted, so those look awesome. Um, and the, the colors on the board are just very bright. It's not the best looking board, this is kind of there, like essentially it's just color, different colors, and then just some different terrain. Like it's not, it's not the most detailed board, but it's very bright. Uh, like if I were to walk by and see this, I'd be very interested in, in what was happening, because the ships are also 3D. It's just a very awesome looking game from like a pullback perspective. I mean, the players' capital boards, all the buildings, you know, there's artwork there. So it just looks very, very nice. However, I think that's probably the biggest thing it has going for it because for me anyway, none of the mechanisms <clears throat> wanted me to stay. Because even, the, even though I said the factions are all different, they are, but some of them are kind of like, they're essentially the same ability. It's like, oh, I get a resource of my choice if I control a swamp. Oh, okay, you have that same ability, but it's for deserts. All right. So it's, I mean, yeah, it's different, but it's not like, it's not like unique player powers. Like, I mean, not not even close to relation of this, but like Cosmic Encounter or Rising Sun, where it's like, here's my faction and here's my ability. Or abilities, and it's like, this makes me unique. I want to sit at a table with everyone's unique ability and and be able to, like, know what they can do. Like, half the time, since there's three different things for five different buildings, that's 15 different abilities that you have to keep track of, and this game goes up to six players. So, like, let's... And that's, well, that's with the expansion. So, let's say the four players. You play a four-player game, that's three people, so there's 15, so that's, what, 45 uh, 45 different abilities you have to kind of keep track of at most. That's if they build all their buildings. So, uh, in the latest game I played, it was, we each built two. So, okay, that's, that's, you know, I have to keep track of 20. 20 abilities. Um, how, where am I getting my math there? Uh, not 20, I was thinking five and then five each. It's, uh, it's three each, so it's six, so it's 12 abilities. That's a lot of abilities. Oh, and then they have their heroes out, which was another negative. I never cared about bringing their, their, my heroes in. Like, they were there, and the crucial one that stopped Cat from winning the game, or at least ending the game, was my hero was involved, and he, he racked up a, a bunch of attack power. Um, <clears throat> but I'm like, it's like, uh, he was the only one I brought out only because a spell allowed me to. Like, I had to swap it out and... Like, I just built buildings just for the sake of it. I didn't even really care about them. And that's that's really, like, I just didn't care. I didn't care about anything that was happening because it just didn't have that focus. And I compared this a lot to Twilight Imperium because in Twilight Imperium, everything just makes sense. There's nothing confusing, really, about this game. It's just that you have eight actions. Everyone has access to these eight actions. It's like, I pick one and then everyone does the secondary ability. It's like, great. You have secret objectives, which are awesome, because it's like, this is my goal, so I now have a... Like, whenever people will sit down to play this game, they will have no idea what strategy to pursue, and I think that's a problem. Like, I like to think that most games, I can, I can learn the rules, and even if it's the first time playing, I can be like, okay, this is the strategy I want to pursue. And 
and then I mean it may not it may not you know cause me to win, but at least I have a focus. I can go this route. <coughs> Here, I sat down, at and and I was like, hmm, okay, I don't know what I mean. I know how to end the game, but I don't know. With like the first time playing this, I was like, I don't I don't know how to win the game. Like, how am I getting points? Am I supposed to fight you all the time? No, that's not going to work. Okay, do I need a bunch of resources? I mean, yeah. But, okay, I guess I need to build towers as quickly as possible. Uh, but so, it's like, okay, well, what buildings do I need to build? Because I have to read all of these. There's five here. There's 15 abilities total. So it's like, okay, well, if I... Okay, so I need to get to level three, which in, it's like... I mean... I don't think I have analysis paralysis, but this game made me feel like I did, and that's probably a reason why I didn't like it, because I don't like to sit there and really, and not have a plan. Like, in a strategy game, especially in a 4X game, no. Like, you need to have a plan going into the game, and I feel like whenever I play Twilight Imperium, I have a plan. Even the first time playing it, I was like, okay, yeah, no, I get I get this. This this all makes sense. One, I have these secret objectives, and then there's those public objectives that I can aim for. And then, oh, I need to control these planets because they're going to give me resources and info. It just made sense. Here, it says he took a bunch of stuff, a bunch of ideas, probably from his other, you know, 15 tiny epic games, and he just took, took a piece from every single one and threw it in. He's like, I want to make a 4X game. Here we go. The title's also not the best, Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. This is kind of a, all right, hey, you're heroes of this. <laughs> like, like the, the game has theme. That is a thing I do like. The game is, is dripping in theme through the rule book. I mean, the heroes have a backstory, like, on the back of all of them. I thought that was really neat. Uh, one of the really cool things is if you win with one of the factions, at the back of the rule book, there's the, the origin. The front of the rule book is the whole background of why everyone's fighting in the first place. But then there's the origin of these factions, which is really neat. But it says, if you win with this faction, like the humans, if the humans win, read this. That's awesome. Like, I think that's really cool. I think a lot of games can benefit from doing that. Like, because that kind of gives you a, kind of like an epilogue. Like, it's not like, okay, well, we, I put like, like, oh, I played the game. This is what happened. You don't have to try and piece together events, like, and, and make up a story, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But I, I do like the idea of that epilogue of, like, humans won. This is what happens in in this world. That's really cool. So, I mean, at the end of the day, like, I have no interest in playing this again. I don't think it's a bad game. I was reading a bunch of articles because I'm like, what the hell? Like, but I do, th like, I'm like, I don't get it. For all intents and purposes, I should like this game. And I'm not the only one. A lot of people are like, what am I missing? Like, what, like, like, what, why don't I like this game? Even though I like all these other 4X games, who I mean, and maybe you guys, maybe you guys can be like, ah, I think this is this is why, or or you know, yeah, yeah. Maybe you can, maybe you can give me some insight as to what makes you like this game, or what makes you maybe agree with me, and you're like, nah, I didn't get it either. But I have uh, seen that not a lot of people are talking about this anymore. I remember Tom Vassell was raving about it, and they just got done with their top 100 uh, spoilers, and it wasn't on there. So it's like, hmm. It must be a game that was kind of a flash in the pan, and it's like, all right, well, hmm, I guess it doesn't really do anything intuitive. So that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at. Cat uh, doesn't like any of these games, by the way, in case you're wondering. Um, and uh, Devin did like it surprisingly, but I think it's because he was doing well at the start. Like he actually kind of ran out of the gate running, came out of the gate running, and I was like, okay, and then. But he still was getting stopped, and then all this other stuff. So it was just, it was, there was never a point last time we played where it was coming close to an end uh, until it finally did. Like, it was like, oh my god, this freaking someone win, but I want to win just because we're competitive. And, uh, and uh, so, uh, Devin gave it a 7.5. Um, I do not agree with that score at all, but that's that's what he gave it. Cat gave it a 4. That was expected because she doesn't like 4X games. Um, and I'm going to give it a 5. So on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give it a 5. Uh, I think it is an average game. Um, and But I do not I do not see myself ever... like Even if someone's like, hey, you want to come play? It's like, no. No, I do not. I, I think a 4 is a little too low. And a six is too high, so I'm kind of at a, it's a very solid five, average game, 
uh, and the expansions don't really do a whole lot. Um, it just adds more factions. And there's another one that I didn't even know until I was looking it up, uh, Pestilence, which adds Birdfolk and Merfolk. Um, but they're probably just other factions that probably layout is pretty much the same. Uh, and, I mean, there's expansions for mercenaries, which anyone can just hire, and they have that mercenary, but no one even touched them in the games I played. There's Siege Towers, that's or Siege Engines. Never even touched those, so... It's just, it's just fucking, it's there. Heroes, uh, Heroes of Land, Air, and Sea. Let me know what you think of the game in the comments below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching this, and if you like this video, then click the subscribe button below to enjoy any video that I put out. And right next to that subscribe button is a little bell. Click that so you get notified of whenever I actually upload these videos. If you want to support the channel, you can definitely visit my Patreon page. The link is in the description below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.